Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about data frames, which are the most important structured API and are built on the low level APIs such as RDD. Data frames are the most common structured API, which looks like a table. If you can see on my screen, it looks like simply a table, which constitutes of rows and columns. There is a schema associated with a data frame that implies each column will have its own metadata. The data in data frames are stored in partitions and the data frame are immutable. Immutable simply means that once a data frame is created, you can't change anything about the data frame. However, you can create a new data frame out of that data frame. Now to understand with an example, consider we had employee data which we read into a data frame. Now we had to filter the data where the salary is greater than 10,000. So we can create one more data frame out of this first data frame. Now we had to select only name, department ID and salary from the second data frame. So we can create a third data frame. So these are immutable. You cannot change anything about the first data frame. However, you can create multiple data frames out of the previous data frame. There is another way which is cascading where you can cascade more than one transformation commands from one data frame and you can create a new data frame. Consider we have an employee data frame where we have data stored in four data partitions. Now we have a transformation that we need to apply on this data frame. Once the transformation is applied and the action is called, the data partitions are shared across the cluster. Now each core can work on each partition of data with different tasks and all the tasks can execute in parallel. So four tasks in this case can execute in parallel on this data frame. And this is the main reason why Spark prefers keeping data in partitions. Now let's understand how Spark works on planning for the structured APIs. To work on the execution plan for a structured API, Spark basically goes through two planning sessions. One is the logical and second is the physical. On my screen is the logical planning workflow. Once the code is supplied by the user, Spark creates an unresolved logical plan. This unresolved logical plan is validated against the catalog in order to validate the column names and the table names. Once this validation is done, Spark creates a resolved logical plan. This resolved logical plan is taken into the Catalyst Optimizer, which basically does the whole optimization for the logical planning. Once Catalyst Optimizer completes its optimization, it generates an optimized logical plan, which is the logical DAG. Next in planning is the physical planning. Once the optimized logical plan is ready, Spark generates multiple physical plans based on the cluster and the physical configuration. These physical plans are run against a cost model, which basically generates cost for each of the physical plan. Once the cost is validated, Spark selects the best physical plan. And that physical plan is sent to cluster for execution. And once the executor receives the physical plan, they run that physical plan against the data partitions. And that is how the whole execution for Spark works. The last thing pending is DAG. DAG is directed as a click graph. As you can see on my screen, this is how a simple DAG looks like. We have arrow marks pointing to the next step. And Spark uses DAG to resolve its executional plan. Today we understood what are data frames and how Spark resolved execution plan for structured API. In our next session, we will be beginning with the coding for Spark. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.